hello friends this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with another uh, tutorial doing a little bit of mixed media work I have decided this we're working on the grungy bee journal and I've decided to work on some of the signature pages before they are actually sewn into the journal and then uh, as an added note I am going to do a completely different binding for this journal. I'm so excited. I watched Stacy over at Stacy's Crafty Jam. She did an open spine and I'm gonna try that on this journal. I'm so excited. She did a fantastic job. It was a very fiddly process, but she, she pulled it off and it was amazing and I love it. So, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do today though is we're gonna work on a journal page, but I want to share some sad news first. So. I don't know if you guys watched when we made these journal pages well they've now been cut so as you can probably see we've got we've lost some stuff because what I did is I actually folded the papers I put them in um, in with other pages to be in the signature well this stays tacky for a while so when I tried to separate them look what happened so these are now going to have to become pockets this might have to be like a, a side tuck or something but so note to self don't do that <laughs> so we've got some that happened here and this cannot even be repaired like i'm so bummed about that but we will use all those pieces but just so you know you don't want to do that so it ruined all three of them so this is just a half page which um, is going to be perfect for something else but um, and then this is the other half of that one that got ruined so i'm so bummed about this <laughs> So bummed this one remained intact so this one's going to be really fun to work with but anyway I just thought I'd share that with you if you're working with mixed media especially you want to make sure that your paper is completely cured and set because you don't want this to happen and destroy your beautiful work which I uh, completely failed at protecting my work in this case a um, little bit of grace for myself though you know I was in the middle of the whole you know s dual surgeries you know and you know I had two surgeries in six weeks time so uh, it was a lot it was a lot going on so anyway without further ado let's talk about this so we're going to be doing some texture paste we're going to be doing some gold gesso we're going to be doing some stamping we're going to be doing some um, embossing heat embossing and so let me just show you what I've got I've got some gold gesso from the crafters workshop love this stuff I've got my flexible modeling paste from Liquitex I've got a variety of golden fluid acrylics turquoise yellow ochre and sap green hue I have some I thought I might do some white splatters this is distress distress spray stain I used it recently in another project and I absolutely love how it works. So I did stock up and bought a bunch of the colors that you can't get online, like on Amazon or whatever. I had to order from scrapbook.com, so I'm excited about that. I've got my raw umber fluid acrylic as well as my matte medium so I can do a glaze. You guys know I love glazes if you've been around at all. I've got my one of my favorite stamps. This is a penny black French stamp. I'm going to set some of this stuff aside. We've got embossing glaze in fossilized amber and vintage photo. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those. I've got my clear ink, a couple of palette knives, and some paper bits that we're going to be doing a little bit of a collage. Um, a collage. This is a brand new stencil I just got like last week. Look at it. I love the script so I'm super excited about this stencil um, but anyway this is a page that's going into the journal and I um, I would advise you I mean now you could do this once this in your, is in your signature but you risk getting stuff on the other side and if I were to happen to get a bunch of yuck over here and I didn't like that I could just put something over it or cover this whole page so that's kind of why I'm doing that I am going to open this up like this I did already prep this half of the page with some clear gesso and the reason for that is because it it helps to to stabilize the paper now this is 65 pound uh, copy paper so it's pretty durable and and pretty thick uh, for for you know junk journaling so I don't know if you can hear that but it's 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 a good quality um, good weight so what we're going to do today is we're going to start with doing um, 
doing some stenciling with modeling paste because I really, really, really want to use this stencil. I'm not doing it all over it. I'm focusing on this lower right hand corner. So let me go ahead and get the modeling paste out. So they will be just as in all of my mixed media kind of videos, there will be a lot of pausing and drying. I do cut that out so you guys don't have to endure that. But, um, but that's just kind of the way it goes with this this um you know what i'm almost thinking that i want to put some stamping down first um i don't know if i want script on script though um hold on a second guys second thoughts here i'm just gonna look and see if i have anything that pops out at me that that would be really beautiful as another option for some stamping i, I tend towards script stamps but let me see if I've got something else here. I'm so sorry. Um, hmm. um, so these are some of my, what I call grab and go stamps. They're just um, various little things. So like we've got the alphabet, we've got numbers, might go with the numbers. And then we've got the little circles, which I think I've used recently in another video. So I think I wanna do a little bit of stamping first. <clears throat> but I'm going to stamp with my Vintage Photo Archival Ink, which is right here. And this is going to make more sense as we go along, I promise. So I'm just going to do a little bit of stamping in this area that we're working on. This is kind of the focal area of the page. And I just want to get a little bit of something in, interesting in the background. That was a strange shape. Look at that. That's okay. Just a little bit, like so. Alrighty. So let me just tap that up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't like the shape of that. That was circular. So let me tell you the story of this. So I used to store my stamps near the floor and it got melted by the heater. So that's why we've got this kind of strange edge right here, which is I think what caused that roundness. But that's okay. Now, um, I'm also thinking, um, I'm just thinking about order of events, like kind of like order of operations <laughs> in, uh, in math. We want to think about order of operations for layers. So I think we will be good doing the stenciling first. So I'm going to bring this new stencil in and put it right here. And I'm not going to, I'm not focusing on a whole impression. I just want bits of raised raised text here. So I'm going to try to keep it in this area right here. And you might notice I'm not getting it everywhere because I don't want it to look really um, specific and perfect. So I'm just getting the excess off and you don't want to leave a bunch of a modeling paste on top because when you pull the stencil up you'll it will create peaks of, of the texture paste so I'm just going to slowly pull that up oh I love that I love the subtlety of that so let me just wipe the stencil I'm going to be a good girl today and wipe it really quick and we're going to go ahead and let this dry really quick and then we're going to come in for the next step so I'll be right back Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's nice and dry. I just love the subtlety of that. So now what we need to do is we do need to, I just remembered, we need to do a little bit of matte medium on this page as well because in order for the glaze to work, I need that matte medium base. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick coat. I'm so sorry I forgot that, um, but I will do that really quick here. Get that mat to stay down. <laughs> I need a brush. Goodness gracious. There we go. Let's go ahead and just give this a quick coat. I promise this will make more sense as I keep going here. So we're going to go ahead and take a moment and dry this really quick 
and I'll be right back and we're gonna do a glaze, which is one of my favorite techniques. So I will be right back. Okay, additionally, off camera, I did prepare my cardboard with some gesso. Um, that helps again to seal that base because cardboard is just a very absorbent. So that's gonna help it, um, things from just kind of soaking into it. So that looks to be pretty good. So now we're gonna mix up a little bit of a glaze. So again, a glaze is one part um, paint, which in my case I'm using uh, Golden Fluid Acrylics and matte medium. So it's one part paint to two parts of the matte medium or glazing medium, same, same deal. So I used to use glazing medium, but this is a lot, a lot less expensive and it works the same. So I'm just gonna mix that up. And we're gonna go ahead and coat this entire page, which some of it's not gonna matter because we don't have texture up in this top portion, but Hopefully you guys will see what I mean here. I'm just gonna go to that fold. Hopefully I can just go to the fold there. Most of that part's gonna get wiped up um, because it's not it's not important at that uh, on that part of the page. So again, we'll make more sense here in a minute. If you watched when I did the pages that I just showed you, um, I did this process and explained it in uh, a lot of detail. So I like to go both directions around this text because it helps it to get in all of the places. So there we go. We're gonna go ahead and get a baby wipe and don't gasp. <laughs> um, and we're just gonna wipe. So I'm gonna focus up here and get some of this wiped back. Well, it's, a lot of it is actually staying, which interesting. I love the grunginess. This paper is from Sweet Pea Curiosities. So that is lovely. And we're going to go ahead and get a little bit more on here. I wiped too much off. So we're going to put it, reapply it. You can do this as many times as you want until you get the result, result that you want. And so this time, when I go over it the second time, I try to just dab instead of wipe and that helps it to stay a little bit better. And then we get kind of this modeled um, look all over the, the page. So look at that. It's gorgeously grungy. There we go. Love it. It's exactly what I want. So again, we've got to heat set this. I'll be right back. Okay, that is done as well. So you can probably see the difference. This is with without the glaze and this is with the glaze. So obviously that'll be folded in half. So they're not gonna be together. I do already have some mess on the back, so I think probably what I'll do is I'll figure out how to protect this side and I'll do some, some spraying or something on this to kind of cover that. It's not a problem, like it, it doesn't look terrible, but I don't like it because it's, it's uh, uncontrolled <laughs> little issue I have. So I am thinking about what I want to do as far as the embossing and the um, gold gesso, which we may or may not do. So I think I want to try some of the embossing paste in fossilized amber just to bring out some yellow, but I need to think about what, um, what stamp I want to use to do that. So do we want ABCs or do we want, I think I want ABCs. So I'm gonna wipe this stamp off really quick just to make sure that we don't have a bunch of um, ink that's gonna transfer. I usually don't just because it's it's black archival ink or raw or vintage photo archival ink, so it's pretty permanent. So I'll give it one more wipe here. I don't clean my stamps very well. It's not an area of great discipline for me. <laughs> so there we go. And we're just experimenting. We may or may not like this. I'm not sure. I need to grab a couple paper towels. Sorry about that. Okay. So I just dab that dry. And then we're going to go ahead and do just a little bit of um, embossing with that stamp and my clear embossing. A pad look at how grungy that got in my last video so this is going to be tricky because um, 
yeah, let me go ahead and ink this up on here. Um, because we've got texture underneath, it's we're not going to get a um, solid per, um, impression at all because it's too many, too many, um, too much texture. So I'm going to just. I don't know if, if this is even worth it. Um, Hmm. I'm just debating this right now because I'm not sure if this is what I want because where is it going to stick? You know what I mean? I think we'd be better off to skip the embossing step on this and um, and do something, just move on with some of the other, the other pieces. I'm so sorry, guys. So that being said... We have to work, we need to work on our cardboard. So let me just set that page aside for a moment. And um, this is still kind of wet. I'm just gonna do that and get rid of that. So we're gonna do a glaze on this as well as just a base layer after we do a little bit of stamping. Oh, you know what? We could maybe stamp on this. Yeah, why not? Let's back up and try again. Try again. This is another stamp that got melted because of the heater on that whole corner. <laughs> okay, so let's, this might actually be really, really cool. Let's, let's try it. Again, we're, we're putting this on a texture, so it's not going to be very clear, but that's okay. I just want to get a little bit more of that over down here at the bottom. Let's let's see what we get. We never know until we try. You know how I say. So I'm bringing my tray over here, and I'm gonna go go in for the fossilized amber as I mentioned, because I think it would be fun to bring out some yellow. So this is the focal image for this piece. Is this little bee with some turquoise in it? Hence the cobalt turquoise um, paint we have here. <clears throat> okay, so let's just tap that off and see what we get. Ooh, we might get more than we wanted because I think that's, it's sticking um, where it's just wet gesso still. So that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and heat set this and I'll be right back. Very, very interesting. Let me show you. Look at that. So we can see the letters but there's places where it's just clear because we didn't get the embossing the embossing glaze so I can't quite see it right now but that's a great first layer so I'm just gonna let that cool for a second and then we're gonna go in with the glaze on that portion as well I'm gonna put a little bit less out because boy that was really wasteful I had to wipe that up so which is par for the course for me sometimes so it should be good now. I'm just going to put a layer of the raw umber glaze. You do not have to have this artist acrylic, this golden fluid acrylic. You can use any acrylic paint uh, for this process. You can also use any color of paint. I just like the raw umber because I like the, um, the grunge. I like the brown. But you can definitely do it with any color you choose. So I'm going to grab a baby wipe and we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to really... Um, boy, what happened here? Where's our, where's our stuff? <laughs> Can't really see the embossing. Interesting. That's okay. It's an experiment, right? So I'm going to heat this. I'm going to dry this really quick and I'll be right back. So that was really odd because I can't really, I guess we can see it a little bit. I love the grunge though. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So. I am going to continue to work on this part for now. I want to bring in the um, the cobalt turquoise to bring out the turquoise in our focal image. I also have a piece of embossed paper that I thought would be fun to use to bring out some of the pink, but we'll see about that. And then I've got some of my mixed media paper with some turquoise. I thought that would be fun as well if I decide to build up something um, there. So this, but this is all going to go underneath the 
cardboard. So let's go ahead and go in with a little bit of this cobalt turquoise. I also need to get um, some yellow paint as well to bring out the yellow, so hold on. Um, yellow, yellow, yellow. That's iridescent, I don't want that today. Nickel is so gold. Um, yeah, look at how similar those are. Okay, cool. Nicolazo gold. Nicolazo yellow, rather. So we're going to go ahead and just squirt a little bit of this out on my mat. And I just like to take this and just kind of just put it here and there. It's not going to show much because it's actually um, the same color uh, mostly as the as the uh, embossing that we just did. So, <clears throat> so another quick heat set. So the next thing I want to do is I do want to bring in a little bit of the gold, but I'm going to put, we're going to do the turquoise first, but I want to bring in some of that gold gesso. So again, same process. Just want to get a little bit of that color just to bring out that. So if you have a color you're trying to focus on, if you can bring it in in, in other elements, it's really uh, complimentary and it looks great. So that is perfect. Perfect, perfect. So um, I'm, instead of continuing to stop and dry, I'm gonna just set that aside for a moment. Put too much paint out again. And let's see if we can work on how we want this to be laid out. So I'm gonna actually move this completely off of there and bring this back over. So this is obviously way too big, but I wanted some script to go underneath. So I'm just gonna kind of play around with a little bit of a layout here, um, keeping in mind that, um, that cardboard. Oh, I need to tear that the other way. I do not want the white showing on this. So if you tear away from yourself, you don't get that white as much. So where's my archival ink? Ink this up. I'm not sure if I'll use this pink bit, but I wanted to have it as an option. And ink this up. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these the same size as they are right now, but we're going to play around with it. Okay. I actually think that's going to be really pretty, that pink. And then, do we need a piece of this as well? I think, I think we might. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go, but we're going to just prep everything and then we're going to have a play. Sorry if I'm a little off. I'm not, um, what am I, uh, 10 days at the time of this filming. I'm 10 days post-op and um, feel really, really tired suddenly and I'm not sure, not sure what that's about. And then I also have some textiles, so I've got this beautiful, beautiful vintage stuff that we're going to try to add here as well. I also have a little bit of gold tissue paper I thought would be fun, but I'm not sure where I want that to be. I don't want to overdo this, so let me go ahead, um, just indulge me while I heat set that to make sure it's nice and dry before we go on. <clears throat> okay. So this is our main focal point. So we want to get some text under there, like so. I don't want to lose all of my embossing. I want to be able to see that. So I'm going to ink this up and then just kind of stage it here and see if we can get an idea of what it's going to all look like. Oh, this is going to be so cool. I love it. I think we do need the pink. I really do. Um, but the, I think the book page needs to be on the bottom. And I don't know if we need this piece because we've got the turquoise in the cardboard. So I'm just going to kind of put this out here like this and see, see what that looks like. 
and this is not turning out exactly as I as I thought it would um, and I did also um, scrunch this down so I just used my hand to just push all those layers down because cardboard can be a little bit bulky if you see the profile there but you can run it you can even run it through your embossing machine um, just just with the plates and it'll flatten it as well so I'm trying to think if I like this or not if that pink needs to be on the bottom yeah I think the pink needs to be on the bottom so now we want to think about some textiles so I do want some textile on here so let me clip a bit of this off it's a little bit hard to it's not very defined there we go let's get that off let's see what we have here to play with so I don't think we need all of that I mean just like that would just be so beautiful so beautiful so and I do this does I do recognize that this creates some bulk but I allow for that in my journals so by making my um, spine bigger and um, the way that I, I do my, my signatures so I am loving that look at that I love it I love it a lot do we need some gold I think we need some gold so let's do that really quick I want to put some gold here on some of this um, this texture here I think I put the gold away hold on and again this is my iridescent gold fine from golden fluid acrylics and one of my favorite things to use so I'm just gonna and I want to be very careful here because the texture it's not a lot to it and I I'm gonna hit the paper as well not just the texture um, no matter how hard I try that happens and I just cover everything because I don't know when I start this what's gonna actually show so I'm just doing that and definitely up here because this is gonna be completely exposed the gold just changes this so much love it and then at the end I'll probably go around with a little bit of the gold around the edges as well of the actual paper so that is cool let me um, heat set this really quick okay so let's get this stuff back in place I'm debating again about this um, bit of turquoise so let me um, showcase that again let's see I just feel like it really helps to pull it all together. I love that. I wonder if we need the pink. I don't think we need the pink, actually. Actually, actually, I don't think we do. So, let's go ahead and start gluing this down. I'm just thinking about the fact that I need another medium to do that. So I'm going to grab my matte gel. So I use a Liquitex matte gel. It just is a little bit thicker and it helps to um, attach things that are a little bit thicker and heavier. I'm just gonna grab one of these brushes that I already used over here. There we go, in the water. Okay. And now these pieces are not a big deal because they're they're single layer, but um, the surface we're putting it on is texturized so and I just remembered I wanted to get a little bit of text textile underneath this as well so I'm just gonna get a piece of this just to play around with it this is a coffee dyed lace from my stash so sorry for the back and forth we're gonna put this back on and see yeah we need that textile lace there I think I think I think I'm just gonna try to trim this up a little bit. Just 
just a fun way to jazz up a page. I want to come up with a nifty title for the video, which you will already know because you'll see it in the video title. <laughs> okay, so I am going to use my fabric tack though for the for the lace. So I'm just gonna think about again where's the placement? There. And whoops. There and there. And there. I love it. Okay. So that's where it's gonna go. So I'm just gonna go for it. I can never remember which is the right side. I think it is this side. I'm gonna put that down there. Okay. And then we've got our turquoise piece here. So I think I'm gonna kind of put that right in the middle. So this one I'm going to use the fabric tack just because I trust it on top of that lace and then we'll move to the matte gel. Like so, just going to stick that there. I love that little bit sticking out down the bottom. And then actually I think we're just going to continue with the fabric tack for now until we get to the cardboard. Sorry for the change of plans. Fabric tack is pretty darn good. Works on a lot of surfaces. And I love it. So we're just going to set that there. Love it. And then um, and I was thinking about the tissue paper, but I think I'm going to forego that. And then that's going to go there. And we're going to use the matte gel. So. I'm going to show you the thickness of this. So you see that? It's pretty thick. It doesn't even fall off of my brush. So it's a great medium for, for adhering things. It's, it's an adhesive. It has a lot of purposes, uh, many of which I have not explored. But this is what I generally use it for. I use it a lot with um, when I'm working with metal bits. It holds really, really well. And you do want to be pretty generous with it because you just really want that to stick well. So I'm just going to set that out of the way. And we're going to plop this on here. Plop, plop. Oh my gosh, I love this. Where's my paper towel? Did I already trash it? Oh, it's on my lap. I'm just going to give it a press here. All of it. I wish that that embossing glaze would have worked, but I didn't really think that out, think that through very well, which is, which is okay. There's no fails. I love that. Let me show you a close up. Look at that. Just a fun little mixed media corner is, is awesome. So, and then we wanted this. I'm gonna cut off some of these little spidery bits here and just clean it up just a tad bit. I got this was uh, from my very first uh, estate sale. Um, I bought a bunch of fragments of stuff. So that's going to go on top of there like that, just like that. So the tricky part is I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. It's trying to figure out, I think I'm just going to have to put it all over and then figure out where I land because it's kind of, kind of interesting. So I do want it to kind of hang over onto that, onto the, um, the book page there. So I'm going to try to get a little bit there so it'll stick. Just a bit. Paper towel again. And then, oh, we need, you can tell it's not down here. Sorry if I'm mumbly. It's kind of a lazy day. My husband was is so, such an amazing guy. He shampooed the carpets yesterday, which, I mean, even if I was not recovering from surgery, I, he wouldn't have had me help him because it's his thing to do. Um, but um, the carpets look a lot better. They're so old, they're over 20 years old, so they'll never be great, but they're better than they were. And then our little bee is going to go right there. I love it. I'll probably add um, 
the sentiment. I'm feeling like I need to back this though because it's feeling really flimsy. Um, I need to, um, give me one quick second guys. Yeah, it's this, is it this punch? Let's see. Let me just get a piece of paper and punch it and see if we, if we um, have the right, the right size, I believe it is. So yeah, I'm gonna cut two of those. I want that to be stable. It's right now it's pretty, it's pretty thin. So let me take a moment and glue these together and I'll be right back. Oops, just moved. That's okay, Fabri-Tac is great for this. We will ink up the edges to make sure that nothing, no white is showing. I'm just gonna get around the edge of the back just in case it, um, cause this is gonna sit up off of the, the surface a little bit and I don't want any of that to show. So, oh, so cool, so cool. So she goes like that. We're gonna go ahead and glue it on with the Fabri-Tac in this case. Actually, it probably wouldn't hurt to do both. So let's get the Fabri-Tac on here. And then we'll also use a little bit of the matte gel. Um, and it's okay if it mixes up in there, not a problem. I've done this before. So there we go. Alrighty. Our B is gonna go right. There, I love this little bit right here that's curling up. So cool. So again, I'm bummed that I couldn't, I really, really was wanted to see some, um, some embossing, but that is okay. So there is our page. Isn't that so beautiful? I love it. I love, love, love it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more mixed media, um, I'd be happy to show you. I don't want to inundate my channel with mixed media because that's not what people are coming to my channel for as a rule, uh, people that like it. But let me know what you think. I am going to do a lot more of this in the journal. I'm going to be doing some, some page edge stamping and embossing uh, with the um, glazes. It's going to be pretty cool too. So anyway, thank you guys for so much for stopping by. <laughs> I hope I'll, I mean, I... I promise I will get sharper as the days go. <laughs> so I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.